Ahoy! I briefly mentioned yesterday that New World would get some fixes to their performance with the next patch, but we actually got much more information than that today with a brief interview with Mike Bocieri, one of New World's Athos engine team leads, talking about plans for the future for optimization for making the game run better in general. In that context, he also gave us a little bit of insight into engine upgrades. So I'm just going to mostly quote here and just add an occasional comment here and there because most of this information can kind of stand by itself. The first question is one that I saw a while ago on Reddit. What are your plans for DirectX 12? When the game came out, you said the game would move to DirectX 12 after a few months. We are missing out on better graphics and potential performance. The answer? As Rich Lawrence mentioned in 2021, Newell's Athos Engine team has had in the past and currently has active development towards supporting DirectX 12. When any new platform technology has the potential for improvements, both in areas of graphical fidelity as well as performance, the ability to leverage new technologies effectively is heavily dependent on both the upfront cost to develop the implementation as well as the downstream cost to the game's content creators. In this case, when he's saying content creators, I think he's referring to people that are making content for the game, so effectively developers and not content creators. That's a bit misleading because of how the word is used nowadays. As a result, when we consider against the broader portfolio of things we can do as an engine team on behalf of New World's players and New World's developers, those costs weigh heavily in our calculations. Thus, in consultation with New World's leadership, we've taken a longer term approach to supporting new rendered platform technology and have instead spent much of our time supporting the team with a host of new tools and technologies that we think have greater immediate value to players, more efficient developer workflows for making new game content, new shaders and new character rendering tech, etc. Many of these tech changes go out as part of the game content updates, but are otherwise not called out as standalone engine technologies because they don't have much player value without the parent content that uses it. Expedition bosses, for example, were built with and heavily benefit from new graphics technology in our Brimstone Sands update. In Season 2, you may notice that more characters on screen simulate their cloth apparel from further away. These are just a few examples where we made strategic investment choices to support specific game content rather than rush out support for a new renderer. A DirectX 12 update alone, to the contrary of some online opinions, is in no way a magic bullet for performance optimization. If anything, it can present new challenges toward performance optimization because the core technology leaves much of the control of the system hardware in the hands of the graphics engine. Previously, a game could reasonably rely on the DirectX 11 API to handle giving you resource allocations at the OS level. With DirectX 12, now you have to build your own methods for handling those resources within your game engine. With great power comes great responsibility, is the quote that comes to mind, or the arguments for manual versus automatic transmissions. In theory, manual shifting gives you more control, but with the trade-off of now having to think about it and do gear shifting as a driver. In a lot of cases, those trade-offs will be worth it, but if you've driven an automatic car for years, the switch to manual can be very jarring. Therefore, as we've been working on implementing our DirectX 12 support, we spent a great deal of time and effort trying to make the transition comfortable for the newer developers. Before we get to the next question, I briefly want to talk about this because I have some very personal experience with this. I have no knowledge of coding or anything of that kind, but I have experience with a game transitioning to DirectX 12 and people thinking it would make things better. The game that I played previously was Smite, and Smite did have a DirectX 11 version and then upgraded to DirectX 12, and I think around the same time also offered a 64-bit and a 32-bit client. So you had to make two choices. You had to choose your DirectX version and your bit version when you launched the game, which was just annoying in itself, but also just choosing the more modern version didn't necessarily mean that the game would run better. For example, the DirectX 12 version did run better on my PC specifically, wasn't the case for every PC, but it also came with a lot more inconsistencies and crashes, so that was a very bad trade-off. And as such, I can see why just rushing out DirectX 12 and slapping it on there would not be ideal in terms of performance and what you can get out of it. I much prefer them taking their time with this and actually making it work well so that you actually get a benefit from DirectX 12 instead of just it feeling basically the same or even worse. If I get 5 extra frames but my game crashes every 20 minutes in return, I'd rather not have those 5 extra frames. The next question was, what are you doing concerning performance optimizations? 
The first sentence of this reply is just full on corporate, but I'm gonna read it because it's funny. One of the things I really like about working on New World is that ownership is one of the leadership principles at Amazon as a company and an ideal that all developers on New World aspire to. Ah, isn't that, doesn't that just roll off the tongue? Anyways, moving on. When we talk about performance optimization for New World, we are talking about a shared responsibility across all of New World's development team. In an MMO, there are so many moving parts, from the engine tag that brings data to the screen, to the game systems that dictate the rule sets for all of your world interactions. Degraded or improved performance in any one part can have a cascading effect to all other parts of the game experience. While the Azoth engine team can and does deliver incremental changes to our engine tag on behalf of New World, one of our primary jobs is helping other contributing teams identify and measure the performance impact of their changes whenever we release a new update. We coordinate as well with our data analytics team to monitor the life health of the game product and try to respond to any variance in performance as quickly as possible, as well as assist in investigating player feedback when you note frame rate issues. To put this into a little bit simpler terms, they're basically saying if you're adding new content to the game, that can make the game more laggy, so they have to watch out with that and have to coordinate with all these changes and how they affect game performance. We also evangelize for continuous improvement in game performance, not only in service of a new game content and features, but also in ensuring that wherever it is reasonable to improve existing game content, we fold those plans into a game development plan. As with DirectX 12, however, there is no buzzword I can provide to say we are enabling X feature and that boosts the game 10% or something like that. What I can say is that for our game clients, when we see performance reaching limits, the game is often CPU bound. As someone with a better GPU than CPU, that is 100% true and very, very noticeable, unfortunately. This means that game optimizations that target the CPU cores are going to typically be more impactful for more of the audience than optimizations that attempt to improve GPU performance for New World. Past optimizations include code and content changes to move some computation from the PC's CPU to the GPU when feasible, as well as multi-threading various engine and game systems, so they're able to distribute their computation to more CPU cores at once. All very important things for modern games. Obviously, PCs have a lot of cores, and especially if we look at Ryzen, not every core by itself is necessarily the speediest. Likewise, offloading things to the GPU where possible is very, very good when the GPU is not under full load, which is typically not the case in New World. We plan to release some significant changes to the game's client streaming technology to go along with our upcoming content releases. Following this season 2 release, our 2.02 update will address hitched frames. We hope players will be happy with these changes in particular. I'm gonna see how that plays out. I'm very curious. I'm gonna do some tests on my end as far as possible. Uh, I know that the season two update was weird because the performance was significantly improved on some systems and then significantly worse on others like mine. I don't know what this is about. I don't know what they targeted in the season two update that they get such inconsistent results between players, but hopefully whatever it is, they were able to solve it here. How difficult would it be to add deep learning super sampling or DLSS? Do you have any plans to do so? DLSS support is dependent on implementing DirectX 12 support, so we will investigate DLSS support in greater depth once we've brought DirectX 12 to at least a beta-ready state for the players. So it sounds like DirectX 12 may not be that far away after all with this statement. We have several technology possibilities that we can unlock on the other side of our initial DirectX 12 delivery. DLSS, ray tracing support, etc. These are both possible and of interest to us. I will say that personally I'm a bit uh, skeptical of that in the first place. I think uh, focusing on this technology that either makes the game look nicer like ray tracing or DLSS which is just limited to specific NVIDIA graphic cards is probably not the best priority. There are still plenty of gamers out there and those are typically the ones that have the biggest performance issues that aren't running a GeForce 2000 plus series graphics card or are not running a GeForce graphics card in the first place. So DLSS would be entirely irrelevant for them. So I'd rather see them make those foundational performance improvements that affect everyone and that make, make something like DLSS just less necessary as well than focus on doing something like DLSS. That should be just a bonus basically. Also, I have no idea if you'd actually get any frame improvement with DLSS in New World specifically, unless you may be running it maxed out at 4K or something, because as far as I understand it, DLSS only has an impact on the frame rate of the game 
if your GPU is at cap and with New World mainly being CPU bottlenecked, I don't think that's the case for most players. If somebody knows more about this, is more technologically inclined in that regard, uh, please tell me in the comments, maybe I'm just missing something here. But to my understanding, DLSS only really does something when your GPU is the bottleneck. There was also a closing statement. But if I can close out with one thought, I just want to say that so much can and is still possible in terms of performance optimization and improved visualization, regardless of whether New World is running with DirectX 11 or DirectX 12. Equating good or poor performance and good or poor visual quality to one or the other API is oversimplifying the narrative. Both great games and poor games have been delivered with either method. By the way, quick side note from me here, this is also true for engines. Yes, certain engines have certain limitations, but especially if you own an entire engine and can just modify it however you want, you can basically make it an entire new system over time by just adding to it and changing it over and over. Because I know a lot of people think, well, Azoth engine is just Lumberyard, so it's outdated and bad, basically, and that's not quite how it works with engines. That's also the reason why the Lord of the Rings MMO is on the same engine. Continuing with the article, our hope is that you can feel the love and effort we've put into New World's engine reflected in the quality of the game updates season over season. In the meantime, if and when something in New World isn't performing the way it used to, please keep sharing those reports. You're all an invaluable part of making New World an even greater game. Knowing it brings players enjoyment is the reason so many of our ASOS engine team do what they do. There's one thing I want you to keep in mind with this article and with how much they're discussing in depth here. I have a feeling this isn't entirely coincidental timing. Sure, they have the performance issues at the moment that they need to address, but they are discussing a lot of upcoming plans to some degree here, and the expansion is around the corner. So I have a feeling that at least some things will be applied in the expansion that may improve performance here and there. Obviously, I don't know if that's going to be a full upgrade to DirectX 12 or if that's coming later or whatever else they're going to be including there, but it sounds like we can look forward to something at least. I really hope they are able to execute this well, because to this day, the performance issues are one of the biggest things holding the game back, in my opinion. I think we're getting more and more content over time, that's not the main problem anymore. At the moment, for me, it is the stability and performance of the game that just makes certain parts of the game less enjoyable than they should be. Once we hear more, I'll of course let you know. I think the next patch might be around the corner as well. And of course, the Sandworm Guide is what I'm working on at the moment otherwise. So click subscribe and hit the bell if you're interested in that. If you'd like to support me further and get early trading tips in return, then head over to my Patreon. Thanks to all my patrons who already do exactly that. You can see their names right here. Thanks for watching. Dukesloth, out.